So in today's video, I am going to go over my entire solar system with battery storage that I installed myself. And I've been running this now for a little over a year and a half. And I've been thrilled with it. But there are a few things that if I had to do it all over again, I would change. And that's what this video is about today. I want to help you in case you, you want to do a system just like this. You can learn from what I think I could have done better. So here's just a quick rundown of how my system works. I drew it out here on this whiteboard and every solar system is pretty similar to this. But in a nutshell, you've got the sun right here, brings in power to the solar panels, my solar panels. I have 19,200 watts of them. So I have a big array. And then from the solar panels, it goes to my Solark 15K all-in-one hybrid inverter. And from there, it gets distributed. That power gets converted from DC, which is what the power that the solar panels bring in, to AC, and then sends it to my house. Now, one thing different about my system than a lot of people's systems is the grid power, it goes to my electric meter that you can see here. And then for my electric meter, it goes just to a disconnect where I can completely shut off the grid. But it goes from my meter to the solar, then to my big 200 amp panel on my house. Most people's systems, it, they don't do that because the solar has a 200 amp pass through where you can send 200 amps through from the grid. So I use the grid as backup instead of using the generator as backup. Since I have the grid, it's the cheapest form of energy. So that's the way I do it. Then you've got the batteries down here that will supplement the system and power the system basically when there's no sun. And I've got a PDF you can download for free if you're interested that goes into all the details, the wiring schematics, type of wire I use, conduit, everything I use for the install on how I did this system. You can download that for free at solarpdfdownload.com. Now the brains of the operation is the inverter, my Solark 15K all-in-one hybrid inverter. Now it's called hybrid because it can be used both on grid and sell back to your grid provider if you wanted to or you can use it completely off grid, or you can do a combination of the two, which is what I do. So the Solark 15K inverter is one of the largest inverters you're gonna find out there. It allows you to connect up to 19,500 watts of solar panels on it. That's a lot. And out of that 19,500 watts of solar panels, it can use 15,000 watts at a time to either run your loads or run your loads and charge your battery bank at the same time. Now, my batteries that I use here are 30 kilowatt hours of the EG4 LL server rack batteries. They're 48 volts, and they've been a rock star for me. I've had no issues. They power my whole house, air conditioning, literally everything. And when the sun is out, my Solar 15K converts that solar energy, sends it right to my house to power my entire house. When the sun goes down, it goes to batteries and uses that instead to power my house. So I have it set, which is one great thing about the Solark 15K, is when your batteries get below 20%, it will automatically take from the grid only what it needs to run your loads if you tell it to, or you can tell it to charge the batteries if you want to, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna save as much money as possible to pay back all the money I spent on this system. So once it gets down to 20%, it'll automatically go back to grid just to power the loads for a short period of time until the sun comes up the next day and then it all goes back to off grid again. And that all happens automatically. The Solar 15K here, again, the brain of the operation, it does that without me having to do anything. I just set it once and forget it. Now I have, as you can see here, a 19,200 watt solar array. That is overkill for most of you. Um, I do have a large, not a large house, but I do have a large water system, um, a deep water well, and an above ground water pressure pump that runs water and pressure to five houses on my property here on my land. So you're probably not gonna need as big of a system as me. And I also have, let's see, eight refrigerators running right now on my house or in my shed and house combined. So I use a lot of power. But if you can max this thing out with those 19,500 watts of solar panels or as close as you can to get to it, on those cloudy days, you're gonna be happy you did because you'll still be able to power your house and get a charge on your batteries. So the closer you can get to the max, the better in my opinion. Now I installed this entire system myself but I do have electrical experience. When I was in college, I worked with my father-in-law for a while and he was an electrical contractor. So I learned a lot about what I was doing. So if you're gonna try and tackle this yourself, make sure you know what you're doing. You are working with 240 volts, it can kill you. So if you don't know what you're doing, hire it out to a licensed contractor, licensed electrical contractor, or a licensed solar installer to help you. So this system has worked like a champ for me. 
I really have no regrets with the money I invested in this system and the time to put it together. I have power security, basically. When the grid goes down, it really does not even matter to me. The grid can go down long term, I'm still going to have power. The peace of mind you get with that, it's worth it to me. So with that all being said, there are a few things I would do differently if I had to do it all over again. So let's get into those. So number one, the first thing I would change if I had to do it all over again is add a transfer switch. So right now, really all the code requires, at least in my area, is a disconnect and you can connect your system, disconnect it from the grid. So there's no chance of it feeding back to the grid. I just put in a disconnect. But what that means is when I need to do a firmware update on the Solark, which isn't often, but it is, oftentimes I wanna add something, test out different products, add more batteries, add more panels. You need to shut down this to make it all safe for you to make the connections. Now, when I shut this down though, my house goes down with it. So I have no power in my house while I am doing anything, firmware updates. So my wife is not happy about that and rightly so. And also I have five homes on my property. They all depend on my system for water. So as you can see, I should have put a transfer switch in and I would do that. So where would you put that? Literally, I'd put that right next to right here. So I would put that transfer switch in right here where I could send power directly to my home if I needed to, rather than have to route it through the Solark and then back through here. So that transfer switch would allow me to basically send power here directly or this direction. That I will be adding. So that is a big one. I do recommend you guys put that in on your system. Number two, the second thing I would change is I built my solar panel racks out of pressure treated wood and then I painted it. I built all of my racks, which I have a lot of racks. I have 12 racks uh, that hold five panels each. And those racks literally took me, I think like three months to build. It was hard work. Now it saved me a fortune over going with the metal racks, which were gonna cost me uh, somewhere around 15 to $20,000. I have solid rock in my area of Texas. So digging those piers into the ground literally is impossible for me to do. I'd have to hire somebody out to use special drilling equipment to get those piers down. So I built them out of wood. So I saved a ton of money, but they are not bolted down into the ground and wood only lasts 10 or 15 years. That's really all I'm gonna get out of them. So if I had to do it all over again, I would have went with the ballast style racks the plastic bucket racks, like you see here, they do not need to be drilled into the ground. You can literally add dirt, rocks, gravel, whatever material you have on hand to weight them down enough to get that 100 mile an hour rating. Those install in about one tenth of the time that, I, that it took me to build those wooden racks. So if I had to do it all over again, hands down, 100%, I would use those. Those bucket racks are gonna last 30 years plus. I'd never have to replace that, at least in my lifetime. So if you're doing a system from scratch right now and you're doing a ground mount racking style system, definitely look into those and I'll leave a link in the description of this video to all the materials I'm talking about, the Solark 15K, the EG4 batteries, the ballast style racks I'm talking about here, and a link to the PDF that you can download for free with all the links to where I purchased everything for my installation. Now, the third thing that I may have done different and I get a lot of emails from you all about whether, about whether you should go with the EG4 18K PV inverter over the Solark. The EG4 18K PV inverter is almost a mirror image of the Solark 15K, but a couple thousand dollars cheaper. So the question is, if I had to do it all over again, would I use the EG4 inverter over the Solark 15K? That's a tough question for me. It's still really, it's really a coin flip. Now there is one thing I will say that EG4 claims that they have closed loop battery communication with Solark inverters. But I can tell you from the official statement from Solark is they say, no, EG4 is not a battery partner of ours and we do not recommend using closed loop communication with EG4 batteries. Now, for those of you who don't know what closed loop communication is, it's basically your batteries are not just communicating through the voltage cable basically. What's also happening is there's a little like ethernet cable that's going from your batteries over to your inverter. And then that cable is sending all kinds of other information from your batteries, like temperature of all your packs in there. There's temperature sensors, voltage information, state of charge information. And with all that extra information, basically the inverter can charge and discharge your batteries more efficiently because more information is always better, right? Now, 
Is that going to make your batteries last longer? Some people say, yes, it should. Others say, no. I mean, we don't we really don't have enough history to know. We can't look at 15 years of history on this. So, but more information is always better. So that's not a bad thing. So if closed loop communication is important to you for your batteries, then you're gonna to wanna to go with the EG4 18K PV, at least if you're going with EG4's batteries, which I love their batteries. Based on price and performance, I don't believe they can be beat. Now there are other batteries that work with Solark that they do have closed loop communication with, but they are a lot more expensive than EG4's batteries. For me, that wouldn't be worth it. For you, it may be if you really wanna stick with Solark. But when it comes to customer service, Solark is awesome. I would say 75 to 80% of the time, I can get one of their engineers on a phone call within about three or four minutes and they'll answer any questions I have. Doesn't matter where I bought the inverter from, as long as I have it connected to their app, they can look at it, check my settings and let me know where I'm making a mistake or what I can improve on. With the EG4 18K PV, you're going to be using the support from wherever you bought it, whatever vendor you used. Now, Signature Solar, Current Connected, they have pretty good customer service, so that might not be a big deal. But it is always nice to get an engineer who really only focuses on one inverter like Solark and have them really understand that inverter well and communicate any problems that you have with yours in a way that's easy to fix it. So when it comes to customer service, Solark takes the edge there. So going back to the initial question, if I had to do it all over again, would I pick the 18 KPV inverter from EG4? I don't know, coin flip. That inverter wasn't even available when I installed my system. It hadn't even been released yet. So for you, I think you'll be happy with either one. And I'll leave a link in the description also to the EG4 18 KPV. That's it. I really can't think of anything else if I had to do my system over again that I would change. So if you are interested in a system just like this, make sure to download that PDF with all of the links to all of the equipment I use for the installation, wire size, all of it at solarpdfdownload.com. Make sure to like this video as well. Subscribe to the channel, please. I need more subscribers. So if y'all could help me out with that, I would appreciate it. And we'll see y'all in the next video.